Today's video is sponsored by Mac Weldon. Welcome to r slash malicious compliance where a boy breaks his own arm to prove a point. Background. Way back in the magical year of 2000, I was a teenager attending summer camp. Usually it was day only. Tons of outdoor activities, canoeing, hiking, swimming, archery, the works. I did not break my arm doing any of these. For the older two years of kids, they would host an overnight intense once a month. I was 13 and finally allowed to go and very excited. Got my tent, sleeping bag, and friends. The night went as you would expect when there's 20 13 year olds in tents with the adults nearby. We tried to pull as many stupid stunts as we could get away with. I got dared to stand on a picnic table and dance. 13 year olds aren't very creative. So I got up there and did it. In the dark. While it was raining. <laughs> I did not break my arm dancing on the wet table in near darkness. When we'd all had a good laugh, I went to step down using the bench and missed. My leg plunged down in the gap between the bench and the table. I went down and forward, hit the bench on my way, pivoted around it really fast, and landed on my outstretched hands. There was an audible snap. My left forearm, bearing the full weight and sudden deceleration, snapped in half. Didn't even break the skin. I remember rolling over, seeing my arm with suddenly two elbows, panicking and pushing it back into place. Not perfectly, obviously. It was broken, but it was no longer at a 90 degree angle. That's when it started hurting. A lot. The ambulance took forever to get to us as they kept missing the turnoff for the campsite. I found out later they drove past it for most of that time. Eventually it arrives, I'm loaded in, and it's off to the hospital. When we finally arrive, it's been about an hour since I broke my arm. I've been in intense pain the whole time, and the EMTs hadn't given me anything for it. I don't remember why, the whole ride is very fuzzy. Here's where the malicious compliance comes in. I get brought into the main desk slash triage area. This hag of a woman with permanent resting jerk face starts asking me questions while the EMTs are standing by with me after telling her what they knew. It's a bit fuzzy, but the gist was this. So what happened? I fell and broke my arm. It really hurts. The EMT said you could give me something while I wait. The nurse rolls her eyes and makes a tut tut noise. <sighs> We have to get your arm x-rayed first to make sure it's really broken. We can't give you anything until we're sure. Now go take a seat. I'm sure. It broke in half. Really? You broke it in half? Prove it. I swear, I get kids like you all the time looking for drugs. Now, I'm beyond pissed. I've been in agony for over an hour and this woman is treating me like absolute garbage. Even if it were just a sprain, shouldn't that warrant some kind of pain management? I'm holding my arm, think for a second, and decide, ah, screw it. As the EMTs are about to interject, I raise my left arm, grab the far end of my forearm with my right hand, and push. <laughs> it bends. Very, very far. Her face drains of all color, and she looks like she's going to be sick. She immediately gets on the phone. I'm now in 10 times the amount of pain, but I'm grinning as only a teen can. It took them less than five minutes to put me in a room, pump me full of morphine, and set my arm in a temporary wrap. They then x-ray me and schedule the surgery. I had a plate and five screws put in, along with a full cast that I kept on for about six weeks. They took the plate and pins out six months later. It was very painful and annoying, but other than a gnarly scar, my arm is totally fine. Thinking back on it 20 years, still worth it. OP, awesome story. I've never been so entertained and horrified at the same time. <laughs> then we have this similar story from Lofty Jojo down in the comments. My hubby cut the end of his finger off and the triage nurse insisted she had to see it first. So he took off the towel and squirted blood on her window. Our next Reddit post is from Mia F. N. Wallace. I work at a cinema and the other day I had a guy come up and request to see a movie. I asked if he wanted to see the 2 p.m. session. It was around 1.30 p.m. and he replies, obviously. It's not always obvious to me though and I'd rather be safe than sorry so I always check. It's also a thing at my cinema where if you sign up for our rewards program which is free to join you save a hefty amount of cash off each ticket so I always suggest joining before selling a ticket. 
I started my spiel with this guy when he interrupted and said, I'm not joining anything. So I ask if he has any concession cards and he rolls his eyes and says, no, I just said I'm not joining anything, which wasn't even what I'd asked him. At this point, I'm getting annoyed cause I'm just trying to help the dude save some money and he's getting annoyed with any question I ask him. I know I have to ask where he wants to sit and when I do, he says, in a seat. I ask if he wants to be more specific and he gives me the filthiest look and says, this is taking so effing long. Just put me anywhere. It had only been probably a minute or two of conversation, so I'm pretty ticked off at this point. <laughs> so I pick a seat for him. Front row, as far to the side as possible in a 400 person cinema with a giant screen. Our next Reddit post is from Unbothered AF. Years ago, I worked as the sole hourly employee on a team with salaried workers. This designation has been a mistake on my initial contract and my cool boss said she would switch me to salary just as soon as my first year contract was up. Unfortunately for me, just before my anniversary, my cool boss left and a sucky coworker got promoted. Request denied. No reason given other than, I don't think it's necessary. A few weeks later, we had this event that had been planned by Cool Boss, but since she left the company, it fell to new Sucky Boss and the rest of the workers to staff it. The location for this event was nearly an hour away from the office. Everyone else could just show up to the location, but being hourly, I had to first go to the office, clock in, then drive an hour. Oh well, guess I get paid for travel time. The night before the event, we had hired a set building team to put everything together, but someone from our company had to stay until they were finished, per contract with the location. Sucky Boss decided to make me stay, as I was her least favorite, so the rest of the team left and went home. Well, there were major issues with the set, and by 10pm, it was just me and the one set builder left in the place as he was trying to make this thing work. Set Builder didn't care, as he was making a ton of overtime. And besides, this particular configuration had been 100% his idea, so he was determined to solve it. I decided I didn't care, because I'd found some cushions to sleep on. I ended up dozing from about 11pm to 5am, when he finally finished and we could leave. I then drove an hour to the office, clocked out, and went home, which was thankfully a short drive. I had an hour to shower, change, and go back to the office to clock in, then drive an hour to meet everyone back at the location at 8am. We then worked the event with Sucky Boss again, assigning me to stay later than her to supervise breakdown. So, <laughs> so in a 36 hour window, I ended up being on the clock for 33 of those hours. Monday morning, Sucky Boss has to approve and submit payroll, and only then does she realize that she has to pay me time and a half for those 33 hours. She actually had the gall to be mad at me for not warning her about all the overtime, which made me laugh. As I explained, I didn't think that was necessary since it was your idea to keep me hourly, boss. <laughs> and OP continues with an even better story in the updates. The aftermath for those asking. Nothing major changed for me immediately after that, and I didn't get fired. That many overtime hours did raise several red flags from her boss and the accounting department. She got majorly scolded, but essentially forgiven as she was a brand new boss. I'd already been looking for other jobs, so by the time my contract was ending, I was able to walk out. For those interested, this is the story on how I left. Less than six months later, I was sitting in a review slash contract renewal meeting with Sucky Boss and her boss. As yet another power move, I'd been trying to schedule this meeting for weeks, but Sucky Boss decided she was just too busy, and I had to wait until the very last day of my contract. I'd been keeping my department afloat, plus assisting with two other departments who had people out on various medical leaves, meeting all deadlines while maintaining zero minutes of overtime and 40 hours a week, which impressed the heck out of everyone except my Sucky Boss. I asked for a small raise and to be made salary with my new contract. Sucky Boss doesn't even blink, immediately denies my raise and my request to switch salary. So I smile, whip out my letter of resignation stating that I would be leaving at the end of my contract, which was ending that day at 5pm on the dot. And I whipped out an offer letter from my new job with a starting salary 12k higher. 
She looked shocked. Her boss looked a little pale and I stood up, shook their hands, thanked them profusely for their time and walked out the door to start packing up my stuff. In the end, I left on excellent terms with everyone but her. Those other departments I was helping, I helped them remotely for a hefty consulting fee until they were restaffed even after starting my new job. I offered to do the same for my department, but Sucky Boss assured her boss that she could get someone in there quickly to fill my shoes. It took three months to find someone qualified. They left after four months of working under Sucky Boss. And then the company closed that position entirely and Sucky Boss had to beg other departments for assistance on a project by project basis. Less than two years after I left, the revolving door of people due to Sucky Boss's mismanagement caused the entire department to be shut down. Everyone there at the time was laid off. Man, what a sweet job. Imagine getting paid overtime to take a nap. Our next Reddit post is from Impsurg. I worked as a rescue technician for a safety and rescue company that provides various emergency medical services to construction and hazardous zones. Our scheduling manager was notorious for doing and saying whatever he felt to get empty shifts filled, ironically circumventing a lot of job safety regulations. But on this particular Sunday, I was involuntarily volunteered to work. On the way to a job site, I was involved in a car crash that resulted in our truck turning into an accordion and burning to the frame on a major interstate. Gotta love drunk drivers, right? Luckily, my partner and I had relatively minor injuries. Among the trivial scratches and various cuts, I had internal bruising in one thigh and a knee bad enough to warrant crutches after being discharged from the hospital later that day. HR was very understanding and asked if I was still able to at least come to the office for light duty instead of claiming wages from workers' comp. Seeing as comp was already paying for medical treatment, a new phone, and a laptop of my choosing, and I could still drive, I said sure. My job had no light duty, so basically I came to the office and licked stamps. This continued for about three work days. On the fourth day, scheduling manager decided I was ready to go to a refinery and climb around machinery. He bursts into the vestibule I was using as a workspace and tosses a job seat on my desk. Nobody wants to come in. We're shorthanded today, so you need to be at a refinery 105 miles away in an hour. You can take truck 23. Sorry, manager. I'm still on light duty. Are you serious? How long are you going to milk this out, dude? I need you to do some real work tomorrow. I have too many jobs going on. I'll let you know if anything changes. I'm sure it won't look good to the refinery if I show up limping on a crutch when I'm supposed to be dragging people out of crawl spaces. The next morning, I wake up to an email with a job assignment. Same refinery, same position. I call HR and he says he'll take care of it and to come into the office for light duty. The scheduling manager is waiting for me at the door. Really, man? We just talked about this. Let me clue you into something. We don't have light duty here. You need to be put on a job site your next shift or I'm going to put you on unpaid time off. Your discharge papers didn't say you can't work. The HR guy told me to take it easy until I feel better. No one else is pushing the issue, but have it your way, scheduling manager. At this point, I was starting to walk without my crutch in short bursts. I was expecting to try a job site on Monday if the weekend showed more improvement, but after these interactions, I felt petty. Scheduling manager was vital and interweaved with the company. He'd been there for 16 years or so, so getting him in trouble wasn't an option. I knew to drive a point home, I had to aim for the only thing that mattered, his empty shifts. I went to HR to apologize for the paperwork he's about to file. I tell him I'm leaving after lunch to make a doctor's appointment. Not only was there still deep bruising, but the doctor diagnosed me with sprained adduction and abduction muscles. Estimated return date, three weeks. I happily composed an email to scheduling manager and attached the note. He replied with a flurry of angry emails, which I forwarded to HR with my original doctor note. HR guy told me I could either stay at home and take the comp pay or come to the office daily at my leisure, leaving any time after lunch. He promised that scheduling manager wouldn't bother me and I could occupy the spare office in the unused half of the building. I gladly took the latter offer and for the next three weeks, I was sitting in my office playing MMOs on my laptop all morning, going home at 12.30. Never really had an issue after that. In fact, he never contacted me directly after that. 
All my scheduling was given as a general memo by the secretary. I did leave for another job two months later. And to this day, I get emails asking me to do contracted jobs for them. Our next Reddit post is from Villain Nemo. I was enrolled in a private high school back in the day. This means two things. Basically, they can make up whatever rules they want since they aren't governed by the state. And it means that most of the kids didn't live in the neighborhood the school was located in. Personally, I lived about 20 to 25 minutes away from school, which coupled with the fact that I wasn't a very organized person meant I had trouble making it to school by the time the first bell rang. Well, our school really wanted to crack down on lates. They eventually adopted a system where if you were late three times, you were awarded a detention. After three detentions, you received an in-school suspension. The punishment definitely didn't fit the crime, at least in my opinion. Another caveat to this scenario is that I didn't have my driver's license yet. So when I got my first attention, my dad had to adjust his day by 60 to 90 minutes to accommodate picking me up late after school. Especially since I had a younger brother who was dismissed at normal time. So he had to pick him up, wait an hour or so, then come back for me. I eventually earned my second detention for being late and my dad did not appreciate doing the whole extended pickup again. So cue a few weeks later and I've already racked up another two lates. Then one morning I was rushing around trying to get ready and imploring my dad to get there on time because if I didn't I would get a third detention and an in-school suspension. To which he replied, okay so what's the consequence for being absent? Uh nothing? Well, if we're going to be late, I'll just call in and tell them you'll be absent today instead. So from then on, if we were ever running late, my dad would call the school and inform them I wasn't going to be there. My dad did things like this all the time, and he didn't care because, frankly, he didn't like most of their rules either, and I was a good student. So in turn, I got a couple weeks worth of days off by the time the school year was over, and 16-year-old me couldn't be happier. Then, we had this contribution from the car guru down in the comments. My son figured out early on in high school, if he was one minute late, it was the same punishment as three hours late. If he was late, he would just go back to bed or play video games and show up at 10.29 a.m. After 10.30, it was considered missing a half day. I couldn't fault his logic, though it was frustrating from a parent's perspective. Guys, I wear a lot of pajamas and sweatpants. I'm a YouTuber, which basically means I have no life and I just hang out in my basement making videos all day. And since it's chilly in the basement, I'm always wearing hoodies, sweatshirts, sweatpants, pajamas, everything of that sort. And I'll admit, when Mac Weldon sent me products for its sponsorship, I was like, cool, free clothes. But seriously, after trying this stuff on, this is basically the only stuff I wear nowadays. Mack Weldon clothing is extremely comfortable, warm, and I don't know what kind of science mumbo jumbo stuff they do, but their stuff is made out of some kind of antimicrobial that makes it basically just not smell no matter what, which is incredible. So if you ever think of getting pajamas or sweatpants, I highly recommend these people out. Not because they're my sponsors, but because I personally really love this clothing. You can get 20% off your order with the code SLASH. Check out the link in the description below.